Welcome to Causing the Effect, a podcast focused on the exploration of your mind, body, and spirit. Causing the Effect community, two cornerstones of my podcast are with us, the boys on a Sunday morning. I'm feeling phenomenal. Sam led the fearless. You're now. looking right. phenomenal. So isn't right I, I feel sexy. I'm not going to lie. I got my Jamaica shirt on men there. for <laughs> Naredo, Zico, Pal. Uh, the matter over mind experience, newly rebranded. Um, we're talking about men's health today. And ladies, I guess you could tune out, but if you want to maybe help your boys out, um, that would be good too. Uh, I think Sammy is going to take this. And um, what do you want to start, Sam? Well, you know, my favorite sphere of talk. Of, I of can't wait. Are, is I can't mental wait. health. And uh, I, I was brushing my teeth. I was drinking my protein shake and, Taking my beef liver capsules, I was showing you. <laughs> it's, it's really early in the morning here in Santa Barbara, um, and I was just thinking, you know, it all comes down to this: is mental health, and it, it can, men or women. And we very, very, and it's very cute that we all misunderstand what mental health is, including myself. Sometimes we all get caught up in it. Is that it's all how seriously we take our thinking. It's all it comes down to how serious we see our thoughts and for a lot of us that have spent decades like myself trying to figure out how to um, maintain a sense of homeostasis when it comes to mental health that's been my kind of growing edge you know that that I think that it for a lot of people uh, especially for those of us who have very fast brains Um, I know that there are at least two people on here that can raise their hands and say I got a super fast brain it's it's Three for yeah. three. I would, three I would say all sure. of us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, and, and I'm dumb as a bucket of rocks. So I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, but you got it, but you got an angle because like you're from Jamaica. So it's, it's just cool by default. Like you were born cool. It doesn't matter. Like you got the accent. Like, you know, we're just Americans. You know, Jamaicans, uh, we're known to be full of ourselves. So you may not want to be like, you know, that's ju- perfect. Juice my ego but that me. helps that, that, that boosts mental health. So it's good. It's I mean, a, I, a healthy turbo. Boost. Yeah, we, we have enough. There's enough confidence in this room. I don't think we gotta. I don't think we gotta worry yeah. too much about that. No, but when no. you came on, Sam came on the podcast like what two months ago or last month, and I would say I was taking my thoughts so seriously. And like, it's not like you should take your things as a joke, but like, I was just looking at life in a. It was just, when you when you look at things seriously, it's like the world is too rigid almost. And what Mm -hmm. I'm learning, and this is a little bit of a Jordan Peterson thing, psychology thing, it's like you have to almost retrain your mind to to look at the world like a child again. And not look at it like like almost naively, but look at it like anything is really possible. And when you – Sam really helped me like switch. Like I was in a bad spot. We were fucking – out of control. That's two months bit. ago. My God, I went by so month, quick. Month, I was doing it in the same. You really got me out. I'm of always shit. having conversations with, with both of you in my head during the. I'm just like, I just have my, you know, I get, I get Narada's little, ten seconds of Instagram magic, and I get yours, and <laughs> I mean, both your podcasts, of course. So I mean, so that means Sam goes to bed thinking about us. I don't know how she feels yes. about that, but. Um, I would like you know, to I think know. about it too much. <laughs> I would <laughs> like if you're going to end up having a nightmare, right? <laughs> I want at least three percent. Of, if there's a Venn diagram, I want three percent for sure of Sam's what, mind. That's it. What what I what I you know kind of what I saw and and what and I love what you just shared there. It's like when we we get we all get caught up in the machinery. All of us. It's so temporary though. It's kind of like it's like weather. Like for a lot of us, mental health is like weather. It's it's neural, you know, neurons and synapses going. It's weather moving through us. It's an energy moving through us. But our brain. Our lovely, wonderful brain wants to keep us safe, has to take that energy of anxiety or, or whatever it is, and then create a story around it. So like we're all playing in this story in this in this psychology called thought and thinking. And and it's so re- it feels so real sometimes. So it's so natural for to be human to be caught up on it. But like the, the pivot is, I think, what you saw is is that it's gonna move through us. What gets us in trouble is when we start we stop believing that it's that is um, temporary, and, and then right. we start creating more story from the from the uh, contaminated thinking that we are c- temporarily having. Uh, I agree. I uh, I was in uh, Jamaica. Uh, was it three months ago? Two months ago? I remember when it is anymore. And uh, I really saw that Sam because I was looking at uh, my culture and I realized that we're a culture of overachievers. 
like in Jamaica, um, if you're not, uh, especially if you move to a first world country, if you're not a doctor, lawyer, teacher, an engineer, you're just a failure. So it goes, like they put a lot of pressure on us to overachieve. And I, my, my cousin, she's about to graduate from medical school. And I realized that when in talking to her, she wants people to be proud of her. Like she loves for me to say, oh, good job. I'm proud of you, such and such. And she still feels like she needs that external validation. And we look at that as, oh, you know, she's a go-getter. She's you know, trying to get stuff done. But mentally, that mental health piece is an issue because she has all that excess adrenaline going through her brain all the time. And she's never going to feel like she's good enough. And that's something that we need. I think that we need to stop and, and think about why do we feel like that? Why are we doing what we're doing? Because if we're doing it because we want to feel better or we want somebody to be proud of us, or are you doing it because you actually love it and you want to and it mm. fulfills you? So I think that's a, a component of mental health that we don't even think of. And I'd like for you to kind of add on or comment on that. Who, me? Me? Or yes, sir. Expert. You're the expert. We're all, we're, we're all oh, equipped. Sure. We're all experts. We're all, we, we just don't, we just don't see it. I think, I think that when we get president, we see it. And um, for me, it was really seeing, especially with my tendency to be, to, to, ha to have an AD, ADHD mind that's going really quickly, that you kind of miss certain things. Um, that I can be okay with my entire experience, whether I'm being, I'm anxious, I am anxious all the time, or I'm overwhelmed, or I'm, eight, or I'm just having a shitty moment. I can be okay with that experience. And just be okay with it, and knowing that that it's not have any it's not has nothing to do with me or my ability to navigate the world or to be successful. I'm just having that that moment. And what happens is is that we put all these concepts and ideas and beliefs and conditioning, you know, how we're raised, where we're from, you know, Judeo Christian beliefs, whatever you believe in, and that's packaged up for us. And the brain grabs a hold of it, creates memories. And so the brain is working off of memory, right? The past, and then it's trying to predict the future. And it's jumping around like, it's like, you know, in, an, in a 1990s hip hop video, like Kid and Play, just trying to figure shit out all the fucking time. Excuse my French. It's doing that all the time, all the time. You can't stop your brain from trying to figure shit out. When there's nothing to figure out, it will figure, it will create a problem for you to figure it out. Yes. Have you ever been just like hanging out and, and Scotty can, because Scotty's got a very brilliant active mind too. Um, you're just like having a normal, like you, you, you could be having a great day and, and, and there be, there's a problem that you think there, you need to solve. Like just during the day, like, I don't know, my, my toilet's running a little too loud or something like that. And you need to go fix the toilet. I'm just as a metaphor. Well, that's what the brain's doing. It's, it's creating problems that, that they weren't they weren't there in the beginning in the first place that 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 you fix that you're like what you know at the end you're like why did i have to do that like we do we get ourselves involved in that all the time but when we slow down to the speed of life what i mm -hmm. mean by that is and you don't have to be a buddhist monk or you don't have to practice transcendental meditation it's great when when you can slow down and start to pivot to presence when you see that anxiety and depression, depressive thinking, overwhelmed thinking, that your brain's trying to blame something outside of you, like job performance or a girlfriend pissing you, you know, doing something, or your car breaking down, or you have the flu, whatever it is, doesn't matter. When you see start to see the game the brain's playing, you can then take a step back and say, "Oh, okay, I see it," and mm -hmm. and then that's an opportunity, that's an invitation to to become present again. And for me, despite medication, this, you know, I've taken in the past for, for ADD and for anxiety. And we, you know, a lot of, a lot of us have been there at the end of the day, what really helps me is, is knowing that my brain is perfectly designed to get me present by alerting me to the fact when I'm caught up in my head with anxiety, that's what anxiety is. It's just an invitation to get present, but mm -hmm. that's, but that's not what society is telling us. And that's no. not what mental the for the most part what the mental health industry is telling us, and that's not what um, what we learn in school. Like, I didn't learn how to use my brain the right way in school. Did you? Mm -hmm. I learned you how learned to do. To, 
You don't have to you're told to sit down and uh, pay attention. Exactly. To what? To like ignore your play? feelings. Ignore ignore everything. Just do what I say. Right, exactly. Well, even even with schooling, right? Because I was a um, I was tortured by my mother. It had to be a hundred. If it was ninety nine, there's an issue. And just that whole con. Well, this starts just a. This is the way I'll, I'll do my philosophical thing. The way that we are built as the language, the, as language is built is for us to be separate from each other. So uh, yep. subject, verb, predicate. This is just the way language is. The way we are taught every day that things are, are separate. So if you go to school, you are immediately competing with a group of 30 to 50 people when you should be competing with yourself. So that off the bat is bad. Yep. And what are you doing? You're worrying, yeah, you're worried about your stress on the next test. Like for me, that was where my anxiety started. I was like, I need to get a hundred on everything. I need to get a hundred on everything. Same, <laughs> right? It's just, it's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah. So this is why literally same. I'm dying that you said the bathroom thing. Cause before this started, I heard a thing in my bathroom and I made up this whole story that the bathroom's done. I'm going to have to fix this. I'm not going to the beach. And I just went and it was like a no issue. It's like, you're just a fucking asshole. But now I, I think <laughs> that if you accept, it's more about surrendering to that mode. And that's an that, asshole. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Just, just, I don't slightly be an asshole, but accepting that mode of being yeah. of, this is how we are wired to, for, for survival. You're, you're past the record um, of, of things so you don't fuck up. The future is there so you don't die. And just this is the whole game that we're playing. And being able to understand from an analytical standpoint for me that that mode of being, of, of thinking, is needed to get things done to an extent. But then keeping the presence and my spirituality close to me mm. is everything for me. And that's something I would say I lost in the dark, darkness of, of the last couple of months. And like even just having that, just spending that first hour um and now the presence piece right we're talking we were talking about your cousin who's an overachiever if you don't have the presence and you're not looking um so let's say you're you're, you're a little frazzled and you're just kind of living off society norms like some people do and i would say that's what i did in my 20s you're not able to see what you actually value the most you're looking at what the jamaican society values the most for me it was what italian you know let's get married let's make a lot of money Let's uh, have the nice house in Brooklyn. I did that. And I was like, this isn't me. Like, that's just not for me. So by slowing down and being present, um, you are able to align what you actually feel. Because like when you start, like there's so many different feelings. It's not just good and bad. It's like, well, does this feel like this is the next step of my life? And when you're able to sit, you're able to have that conversation with that future version of yourself and be able to like have these deeper intellectual just understand that there's depths to it instead of like very high level like i was living my life high level my 20s like okay we'll get a job we'll make money we'll bang girls we'll do drugs we'll get married fdn and like, it was just very Repeat. like I felt, yeah i was like living unconsciously um right. and i think waking people up a little bit is a part of it and to sam's point the mental health industry i feel like everybody just wants to um you know make a buck at this point it's either like you know people sell this piece that you're missing something yeah everybody listening to this you feel having a sense of lack because that's how you're built because you're just you're, we're always going to have that little feeling but accepting that and you know finding the presence i would think is the is the just the safest way just to be like right now i'm with two two of my close boys i'm hyped up and i there's no there's no unauthenticity there's no right anything like this is it this is the the highlight of, of life for me and and but in reality there is no past and there is no future because it's just you're, this. You're, pre you're present right now and, and yeah. Nerado is too and, and what the beautiful thing is with both of you is that you know your your the sense of presence that we we experience every day we just don't pay attention to it enough right Nerado's really present when he's working with clients i know he is because i i know Nerado. you know Nerado is passionate about health and wellness you can feel it you can sense it you know when someone's full of shit like you know when someone's not authentic both of you you mm -hmm. know we're both we're both full of you know bullshit detectives some of us are really good at i am you know it's funny having adhd and being really intuitive it's, it's a paradox right because on one hand you're, you're you're mind wandering and you're going off into the ethers and you can't stay focused that's the you know the stereotype and and then meanwhile we're intuitive but my point is is there's something that both of you experience. We all do, but I'm going to just use you two because both of you are very intuitive. It doesn't matter where you come from or, you know, what your past life experience was. Something happens when you naturally drop into the present moment, when things slow down, right? When life slows down, like on this Sunday morning, it's early here in, in Santa Barbara, but um, it could be eight o'clock at night and life can slow down. That, that once you get present, you see this intelligence, this, it's kind of like when you're in that flow state, you see the intelligence behind life, not the intelligence, the concept driven intelligence, right? I mean, we can take that, what I'm saying and 
take it from a Jungian perspective, take it from a Carl Rogerian perspective. We can, doesn't, doesn't matter what lens you, you want to look at it through, but we all have that in common as human beings, that we have this gift of presence that A, it's only been in probably, it's been talked about through thousands of years, right? You go back to Socrates and Plato and you can go all the way through modern psychology. They talk about presence and some of the great um, thinkers to the great sages. Jesus talked about presence. Buddha talked about presence, you know? Narada talked about, talks about presence. Scotty talks about presence. Mm-hmm. But what, what it gets lost in, in the minu- it gets lost in the minutia because we've created, we've turned presence into an Instagram post. Right. You know what I'm saying? So people have lost what the essence of what that means. And I, one of the, and then one of the um, kind of goals of my podcast is to point people in the direction of that, that intelligence, that wisdom, that's not concept concept driven. It's knowing, right. you know, that sense of knowing when you fall in love with somebody or like when you know you have the right job or you just feel content for no reason, or you just right. know, and you never forget what you just figured out. Right. Right. Yeah. And that, that this is what um, I think just over the last hundred, I would say ever since things were written, even from the Mesopotamian Bibles and all yeah. that, this idea of the yin and yang, this doing and being. And this is this is the stuff I love. It's like we would call it the the, the Japanese would call it the yin and yang, the yeah. masculine energy, the doing and the feminine being, which is that calmness, that peace. Uh, the the old school Jewish people before the Israelites called it um, there were the two gods I don't remember the names but it was justice and mercy and the god of mercy is that forgiving that fragility and I, I think in today's society it's a very masculine driven world of like let's do let's hustle and bustle and go and do like okay I get it cool but like you need your peace and you need presence to get your, yourself to that peace and the, the, mm-hmm. the harsh part of this is it's simple it's free it's, it's easy and it's not easy, but it's, it's something that is just there. And I, I right. think people try to commercialize this. And even with, 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 with the, you probably see this too, right? In, in fitness, like the best things to do for me, compound exercises, deadlift, bench press, squat. You can't, right. p- guys can't post that every day. But, but then, when you, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and this is great. Narada, your clients, right? Mm-hmm. Your clients don't don't perform at their best when they're working with you or they're not seeing results as well when they're not present. Like, you know, when a client is not present, he's up in his head thinking about his day, if you're working with a client early in the morning or whatever, right? See, that's what I'm talking about. Like we do our best work when we're present. Scotty, you make your hundred thousand dollar deal, whatever it is, you know, when you're present, you have your best podcast episode when you're present with your always Every, everything you do. Yeah. I have to everything be you do. So there's, there's the misunderstanding, right. That we have, we think our thinking is going to get us to, to, you know, we think that we need to think our way out of problems. We need to think our way out of like thinking does not get us to making that a hundred thousand dollars or landing that amazing client or auto, or for All me, right. you know, finishing my book. <laughs> because it's No, like, just, just being, I, just being right, is, right. is the answer for me. It's like, you try to figure it out. And it's like, right. if you sit and think all you're going to do is create more inaction. And by being in a way, it, like I've just been moving more. I've been shaking more. I've been working out better. It's just, it's, it's hard to, to analytically, I think words don't do it justice. Cause nah. you know, if, if you're listening to this, I would just say right after this, just take five minutes, just sit w- with it. And I think if you even focus a little bit on little gratitude, a little perspective, like that's what I was doing. Um, and it just, it's just unbelievable what your mind can do because you wouldn't be able to get that good workout and you wouldn't be able to finish that paper or the book or work hard if you wouldn't be as efficient or happy, because let's say um, some, some, I see these guys, these billionaires, they, they're, they're not living present, but they're just grinding it out and they're, they're miserable. So what is the point of doing it if you're not enjoying it, if you're just looking at, well, I got to get to the end of the year, then I could take my vacation. It's like, right. you're missing the entire year then, bro. Right. Like, <laughs> what's the point? Well, Why are you was, doing uh, it this way? Exactly. Yeah. When I was um, in college, I learned something that transformed my life. And I remember why I read it, but it said, uh, after 45 minutes or so, you need to take at least a five minute break, right? Mm-hmm. Because my mindset was, I was an econ major and uh, my mindset was, you know what? Let's just get this knocked out, right? I have to, if I have to study two, three hours straight, I'll get some uh, honey buns and, you know, five hour energy and just not, and just go through this thing. But it didn't work as well. But when I started to take um, like five minute breaks or so every 45 minutes, every 45 to 50 minutes, go for a walk and come back, transform my life. Because it allowed me to center, it allowed me to uh, to 
get my mind away from what I was doing and actually present myself instead of trying to force my way through being exhausted, which is what a lot of us do, right? Is we think let's hammer through it, hammer through it, hammer through it. And that's the same thing with life. When you feel me overwhelmed, don't keep thinking about the same thing that's overwhelming you. Take time away from it. You'll be surprised how much that can actually help you. Oh, hundred percent. And I love that you mentioned that because it's, we have this built-in diagnostic system that we're, we're just using, we're, we're innocently using incorrectly because we're never, this is the thing. If, if in the curriculum in, 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 in our formative education, like in elementary school, junior high, high school, we were taught how to mind, how mind, how to use mind, right? That we have this built-in kind of dashboard lights, idiot lights in our brain that actually it's like a sensormatic, right? <laughs> that we can, it tells us like, you know, you're too caught, you're too hyper, hyper focused on what you're reading, right? Or on what you're studying right now, take back off, you know, pump the brakes, just take a step back and go take a walk. Like we have this system built into us when we're feeling anxious or we're overwhelmed or we're just feeling scattered. That's the brain saying, Hey, you're in your head, get to get present. And if you need to take a walk around the block, go take, we don't, we're not taught any of that. We're not at right. all. And that's, and, and that's where, um, and, and I don't know why it's so strange. Um, and I'm not, this is not a, <laughs> a podcast on, on scrutinizing the public uh, education system in this country um, at all, but it's, it's, it, it's just amazing to me. Like, unless you're going to Parsons, and you, you know, you're one of those silver spoon kids growing up, Parsons is a school in Manhattan or Trinity and you're, that's a private school yep. and you you know, you have uh, that kind of money to spend on learning presence and learning all that stuff. It's never taught, but it's not expensive either to learn this stuff. Like all you have to do is Google it, but we're not, we're not telling our kids to do that. Well, I, and I, I want to go ahead. Oh, sorry, Sam. I was going to say, I want to add to that the nutrition piece of it. Cause you know, that's yes. something that I it's specialize in. And that's something that we, uh, we also tend to miss out because we're in a situation where we're taught, go, 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 right? Fight through it. But then at the same time, what do they feed us? Foods that are high in sugars, foods that are high in artificial flavors, food that damage our gut, cause chronic inflammation, feeds, uh, feed, feed, it feeds that, right? We yeah. know that now. Like, for example, Sam, I'm sure you know about this, that um, a lot of times uh, psych psychology, psychiatrists, I should say, they will prescribe uh, medication that increase serotonin, right? Yeah. Well, where is 95% of your serotonin produced in your gut, mm -hmm. right? So if your gut isn't, if they're feeding you stuff, that crap, that, and, and thank Michelle Obama for trying to work on it, still not where it should be. But if you're feeding your gut food, that's feeding your bad bacteria, damaging your immune system, causing mm -hmm. chronic inflammation, causing oxidative stress, then you tell, and then you tell a child, be present in the moment and be relaxed. That's not going to happen. People. Well, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I love what you said there. That's so important. Right? And I think is it's the chicken or the egg. I got to tell you myself before I was really, before I moved to California full time, um, this is over 20 years ago. I was the biggest junk food eater. Holy shit. Like I didn't give a shit. Um, but I would get flickers of presence. Like I would constantly be feeding this inflammation machine. Right. Right. The processes that, that in the body that cause inflammation, we know this. All sugars and simple carbs, you're the expert. I'm just telling you, know, from my experience, but I saw flickers of presence all the time. We all do. So I don't know if I, I think that it's that feeling of what we're sharing, we're talking about, that is all on offer that we, that we pivot to all day long. We're in a walking meditation all day long. We just not pay attention to it enough, but it's like the, it's like the piccolo. It's not the rock band playing the rock right. band playing. It's the noise. I think that the inflammation is distracting us from the presence, the sugar and all that shit is distracting yeah. us from our essential nature, which right. is our, which is the present moment because it is, what is it doing? It's, it's, it's boosting what it's naturally it's, it's artificially boosting what in the body. You know, it's like uh, lighting, um, it was just 4th of July and, um, you know, we can't light fireworks in California because we'll blow up the whole state, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like an M8, you know, it's like, um, it's like uh, in a combustion chamber, you know, it's like, it's like a quick, a quick flame, uh, fl like a flamethrower. It's, it's quick fuel. 
right? Right. But we're messing up the 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 um idle of the vehicle of the car engine because we're constantly giving it quick bursts of of energy, and that's what's distracting us from presence. Exactly. Is, is, yeah. The the yeah. uh these corporations make one point three trillion dollars every year. Uh, off of us. And here's the interesting part. I was reading an article about this more. I'm so happy you brought that up. They make 1.3 trillion and the causes to your gut and to your biomes from the sugar gives the medical um, space and healthcare $3.9 trillion. So they are making over $5 trillion off of stuffing us with this sugar. So I just think in our time, this is why our conversations are important because yeah, yeah, you, you're like, okay, I got to deal with my lack. I got to deal with the way I think. And now you have to deal with these external factors, social media and people trying to sell you stuff. And I would say across the board, there's all these little things, clout now, there's all, you know, spending money on clothes, all this cool stuff that's like, it's just a little harder. So I think now is the time that the mind will catch up to kind of the practical sciences, let's say the tech, the social media. And we need these tools to be able to, I don't want to say combat it, but to at least be aware of what's going on. Right. And in totality, I just, I, I would say for me personally, the the union of the mind and body that that true yoga of understanding mm. your mind working on your mind and working on your body dieting all that stuff they're both crucially needed to get yourself through this little bit of a rough patch that we are in in totality of the world inflation uh an idiot president this that all these crazy things that are like just they could really hone you down now it brings it to, to the part that we that we um we're talking about about what people like people are kind of fed up and it's almost like nihilism and you go through those dark spaces and we were able to get out of it. But what about the people that don't get out of it? And I think there's, there's a bigger thing here to, to what I, I never really talk about this, but I just want people to understand like where I come from. We talk about presence. We talk about this stuff because at least I feel mm -hmm. there needs to be a revaluation of our existing values as human beings when it comes to morality, when it comes to being a good human being of like, what does appeal to the standards of what is a human. And I think as men, um, men particularly have lost this. Cause I would say old school guys in the forties, chivalry, treating women the right way. Um, you know, being taking responsibility, all this stuff does get lost in the thing. So I just want to add that piece of like, why I find all this stuff so important. It's, it's a higher good. And this goes into Nietzsche, um, a little bit of German for you, you know, Sammy morals, more of that teat in, in German, that's what it's about for me is that is that morality of like being the best version to help the world that we are in today. And, 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 I, and yeah, I love that. Sorry. Go ahead, Rhonda. Oh, sorry. I just had to, uh, I had what I had it on my tongue because I was thinking about this as you're talking, Scotty. So I think one of the most dangerous things that's happening is that as um, as the Western world is getting um, used to the Eastern practices, mm -hmm. we're taking the pieces from it that we like. And uh, then yeah. we're getting confused because we're looking, they've been doing this for thousands of years. And then we just want to take, you know what? Meditation sounds nice. I'll take a little bit of that. And a little bit of yoga sounds nice. Like any, any real yogi that I've talked to that practices yogi, they say that in the Western world, yoga is basically just becoming stretching. Like it's not yoga anymore because there's so much more. I was on somebody the other day that was teaching me about my moon sign. He's like, okay, I'm a Capricorn. That's my sun sign. There's the moon sign. These other things. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And well, it, makes sense, it makes sense you're an econ major. Capricorn's all about finance and government. Yeah. To, wonderful. Right. So your, moon, right. your moon's a Capricorn? No, my moon is something else. The sign that we oh. know, like, I'm a Capricorn is a sun sign, but then moon the sign ascendant? is something the else. The ascendant sign? Oh, okay. I think it's something like that. I don't remember the whole thing anymore. But <laughs> my point is that... We take the part, the parts that we like. Now, let me yeah. say this, the whole thing with the mind, the matter, the body, all that stuff, right? This is the problem. If you look at someone who practices yoga, most people, and I follow a lot of yogis on Instagram, they drink certain types of teas. They're more diligent with their diets. They, they practice community. Um, they, uh, they focus on their energy, internal and external. There's so many things that they do they don't just practice yoga. They don't just meditate, right? But we in the Western world, because we're so busy or we like to compartmentalize things, we're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to take some meditation. I'm going to take some of that. I'm going to take some, take some. It doesn't work that way. And that's why we get so caught up in the little nuances. And even nutrition, that drives me crazy. And I'll talk about that later. But we get so caught up in the nuances, which is better. This is better. That's better. Should I eat better? Should I do this? Should I lose? Like here, we try to lose weight because we want to look good for the summer, Right? Okay. And then after that happens, then we go back to doing what the hell we we're doing before. Right. Yeah. But 
Sam, me, and Scotty over here, we're different. We're always, every day, we focus on getting better, getting smarter, looking better, improving our mental health. It's, it's really is a lifestyle, but it's not just the nutrition. It's looking at a whole thing, mm -hmm. putting it together, and becoming a better version of yourself daily. I love. Yeah. I can listen to Nerado. I can listen. To that it. was beautiful, Nerado. Yeah. So wait. So wait. This is good. This is good. I love it, Scotty. Sorry to interrupt you, but I, I, I the same thing just came to me. You know, because what I'm hearing you're saying is, is like, um, we need to really see how, as a Western society, we're taking what we think is right for us in the moment, but we're not seeing the big picture. But I do think, guys, as part of this human journey that we're all on, all seven, I think there's seven billion of us now, Jesus, too many, <laughs> uh, uh, that, that we need the contrast, though, mm -hmm. because without the contrast, we don't learn and evolve. And I know this is going to get, like, shoot, you know, I'd love to hear your, your, both of your perspectives on what I'm, or, or you do not agree with me, which is great, too. I, don't, I love it. Uh, either way. But we need the contrast, which I mean is, we need to see like the we need to see the polarity and and like w in order for us to see the best practices in life that's going to work for us right in order for us to get present in order for us to slow down more in order for us to see what's really true which what is the illusion which is thought and thinking which is what where we're living our lives in which is in the psychology of thought not our outside world we're you know we're having this world being script we're we're scripting the world on outside of us each one of us has a built-in screenwriter the, that we don't even see is bullshit, which is bullshit. And then we take ourselves too seriously. Then we think that is real too, which is even more scary, which we all do time from time to time. But we need the polar. I think we need that contrast of seeing the dark side or seeing how when human beings gone wild with, you know, like sugar and, and the, the major corporations, we won't name them that are producing the food for us and the chemicals and we won't get into the names of the companies that are creating pesticides. We, we, can, we can spend the whole day talking about that. But if we don't have the contrast, we never grow. We never evolve. Right. People like Narado and Scotty don't create podcasts and don't create a business or, or create, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, a, a place where people can come and learn about how to, to evolve and improve our lives. So it's actually, and it's, that's what, there's the paradox, right? <laughs> there's, there's the, it's, there's the, the chutzpah in it. Chutzpah is, um, this guy you might know, is, it's like, there's the audacity. There's like the, the, the nerve that as human beings, we need to kick our own asses in order to see the divinity within us as, as healthy, capable, loving uh, beings, as woo woo mm. as that sounds. Um, so there, there's the, there's the, the, the kind of, it's like, we need to, to suffer in, in order to, to be better. I agree. Yeah. And, and I think, oh, go ahead, Scotty. I'll go after you. No, go. No, no. I'm, I'm just listening. I say, so I'm thinking that I definitely agree with that. I, yeah. uh, I definitely agree with that. I think what also the issue is that, is that we're taking the contrast and we are putting it in our own little box. And I've had this conversation with individuals before, especially in the beginning where they're starting to work with me. Cause I also, of course, we work on the mind as well. And I tell them that we got to stop putting everything in our own little box. We've, we've, we've lived, people don't know it's about me. I'm an old fart. I'm about to be 40 this year. Dude, right? I'm almost 10 <laughs> years older than you, brother. <laughs> and I'm here, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but you know and i even even saying that i say that to people and they're like oh no 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 you're not old old just asian number no i'm joking like don't take what i say seriously like you think of me saying that triggers something in your brain to right. think it's a negative thought right take stop putting stuff in our own little boxes there you go and that's the biggest like on my podcast once i said uh i said uh balls to the wall is amazing i legitimately got messages from people saying from saying you can't say that on your podcast and i said look <laughs> if you don't want to listen to my show right you don't have to listen to my show i'm gonna be me that's how i talk it is i don't cuss a lot but i say stupid stuff like that and i have a goofy laugh that's just who i am <laughs> does it and they're like well yeah i think about it maybe it's just how i i envision it or someone so somebody said i'm in the army we can't say stuff like that and i'm like okay but i'm not in the army and most of my listeners are not in the army. Really, what does that mean saying that I have to, are you getting good quality information for what I'm saying? Yeah, and I love your show. Well, that's what you need to focus on. Right. Because we're putting that right. stuff in the box, right? right? 
Right. So we then now bring in a situation where, where we're compartmentalizing everything into black and white. On my show, sometimes I confuse people. I've had the carnivore diet. I have people do the keto diet. And I have someone who's a complete vegetarian or vegan who doesn't eat any meat. And people are like, why do you do that? Right. And I try to, because out of every diet, quote unquote, you can find, there is some, I have enough knowledge where I can take out the part that I want my audience to learn from it. Mm. Not saying I'm promoting the carnivore diet, not saying I'm promoting keto or I'm promoting vegan, but each of them have an approach or have something in it that I think can be, uh, I can be beneficial. I'm not going to go into all that and bore about it with all without that right now. Right. But it's a never fact that, Narada, never seriously, I could keep going. I bore myself. So I bore myself sometimes, <laughs> but it's the compartmentalizing thing. And even in the quote unquote health industry, that's what's happening. The vegans don't talk to the, to the carnivore people, the carnivore don't talk to keto, blah, blah, yeah. blah, whatever. Right. Because we all think that we are right. Well, guess what? None of us are hundred percent. Right. Right. None of, I learned every day, something a little different by doing research or learning from working with a client. I've had clients that have told me stuff and I'm like, you know what, dude, let's do that. That, that works great. And that's for my client that doesn't have the certifications, the experience, what I have. So if you take away the compartmentalization thing, and that goes back to the culture thing. Oh, I have to be married by a certain age. I have to do this by that. I have to, and we live our lives thinking if I don't do these things, I'm a failure. And if you like, I've been, like I said, I'm about to be 40. I didn't become a happy person until I was about 35, 36. Most of my life, I was living my life to please my family. And when I stopped doing that and started working on my physical and mental health and just focus on me, start learning how to play the guitar, meeting amazing people, that's when I started waking up every day with a smile on my face. You know what put a smile on our face too? Can you play the guitar at the end of, of the just play a little ditty like just don't do stairway but play can you play something for us are you ready I'll get, to do that? i'll give it i'll give you a little bit of reggae i'll give you a little reggae cool cool so. oh, nice well I, I love what you said narado i mean it's so true we, we we're living through our lenses we're living through our filters and that's where i've been pointing back to with with how we're living in our psychology as people get offended because you're swearing uh, they don't say it, it's all once we can um unravel this this conditioning right the societal conditioning the uh, familial conditioning, um, religious conditioning, and see beyond thought. Like the brain loves us, mm. but it wants it, its sole, sole uh, um, um, job is to keep us alive. And it doesn't know better. It's, 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 it's stupid. The brain is stupid. It's great for, it's a, like a GPS in a car. It's mm. great for doing quadratic equations. It's great for balancing your, your monthly budget. But it's terrible for seeing the the multiple layers, the the, the multiple, the technicolor um, um, day to day, hour by hour um, existence of our very multifaceted human experience. Which leads me to asking Scotty um, a major question about his his career because Scotty's in the and you know he's in finance. He's a big macha in finance. Macha is a big big dog in mm -hmm. in, in the finance business, and um, I've. Very, that's not my expertise. also phys oh. physically a big dog, you know. He's but, a physically yeah. a big dog, too. Financially, my thing that, that's that's my uh, that's and he's my a mess. handsome and he's a handsome man, too. So, so, <laughs> um, and he's Italian, so you know, so it, it, it being in the world of finance, you you have to juggle, I think, even more so than the, and again, stop me, Narado, if I'm wrong, you know, we all have our stuff, but you have to even kind of juggle things like. You're dealing with a whole different, you know, culture, war, you know, uh, language. There's a, whole, you know, the finance guys speak their own language. Um, how is for you, like, because I think for you, it's even, you're, you're looking at things philosophically, you know, and that's a brilliant that a lot of people in finance are not as well balanced and well, well read as you. How are you able to, to balance all of this out? The, you know the mind body and spirit and because the world you are in has tunnel vision more so than the world's the spheres that, and again it's not a bad thing it's just it is no, what it is i would say based on the morals that i think this group has it's probably not the best thing and i'm, I'm talking about men who their highest values are power money um that all that classic men's stuff and i would say right, for me gecko 
Yeah, whatever that stuff is. And listen, it's yeah. not as crazy as people think, but it, it, sometimes it is. You have these guys who are worth like um, I don't know if I told you guys this story, but the guy who's worth four billion, and then he's mad at his friend that that's worth six billion. Like the dude's upset that his friend's worth more than. I'm like, dude, you have four billion dollars. Like you're not going to be happy. So that's when I when you start hearing these conversations, like I love being around them because you get to see money is not the answer. Because once this guy got more money than his friend, he started worrying if somebody would steal his money. It's about your mind, as as, as Sammy said. So, and then then he saved up his money and then he was convinced that somebody's going to digitally steal his money and then he was convinced by it's like it's all a worry yeah. of the mind and the way i i i mean i come back to my spirituality for it so i believe i don't want to go too woo woo but in a previous life or if i was in more of a ancient world i would have been a shaman and a shaman is a person who's able to see the world on multiple levels as far as let's say the finance guys go looking at it from an economic standpoint as far as philosophers go looking at it from a philosophical standpoint looking from a psychological standpoint i have made it a point in my life not because i need it for my job just because i want to see what everybody sees because maybe the if you take the people on the left um in today in, in america they're looking at things from more of a victim standpoint the people on the right take it from more of a fucking woo woo freedom standpoint and i'm able to see both and when you're able to see that I feel more comfortable speaking my mind. And I really – like the person that you guys see on the podcast is the, the person that the billionaires see. And like I feel like when I meet me, like I, like I don't give a fuck who you are. Like you are a soul and I am a soul. And there's yeah. something with, with I think what you spoke about earlier about everybody when they meet these people, there's something in psychology called a transference. It's like the feeling you get when you meet mm -hmm. like an actor or like somebody big. Like I don't have that. I've removed the transference in my life and there's a respect there that they know they're – it's not like I'm a mean person. There's just like an, an – on a, on a primitive social hierarchical standpoint, it's like, this dude is, I'm here with you and I'm not going to take your shit. I respect you and I'm authentic and I'm raw. You're going to get the best out of us. I'm going to save you money, but don't step over the line. And I right. think people who are good for the sake of being good, that's not truly being virtuous because you're, you're just, you're like a rabbit then. Like there's no, right. but you have to, when, when you are dangerous in a way, when you're able to, when people feel that and, and like respect that, like yesterday on the train, I'll tell you what happened. This is the craziest in New York city. There was a, there was a dude who was like, I'm peeing, I'm peeing on this train right now. I'm going to pee. And what does everybody do on the train? I puts their head down. I was with three of my friends. They were little introverted Asian dudes, two Asians and an Indian kid, very introverted. Everybody puts their head down. And this dude started peeing on the train. Like, just started peeing on a moving train. I go, I walked up to him. I go, dude, you better put that away. You're going to have an issue. I, and and he, he, he stepped up to me, and I went, I went, bro, well, you're, you're right. Like, what's going on? I said, sit down. Come on, sit. I mean, you just said, you, you have to talk. To, you have to let people know that this isn't going to work. But then at the same point, like, you're a human being, and I respect you. And the dude was um, lo just lost his house. He was drunk. He was he went through some shit. And it was like, uh, you know, you have to be able to play this game right. of, of dangerous, but also like caring at the same point. That's how I do it with everybody. And I just really try to speak my, what I feel on the inside, on the outside. And that gives my life congruency. And I think people who don't really, everybody has probably lived this like unauthentically in their life. When you don't do that, you're like wasting energy, putting on the mask. And when you, when you take the mask off, it's like liberation in a way. I hope that answered it. Yeah, it's Scotty, so good. Scotty, I love that. And I have uh, some experiences with uh, with that as well that I want to add on to that is talking about the compartmentalizing thing. But at the same time, we, we take our limited experience and we want to you know basically push it on to other people. The reason why I say that is this. Let's say uh, I'm a storyteller, right? So I just love to talk about stupid stuff. Like I'll talk about a cartoon that I'll watch or whatever, right? Or a situation that you might think annoying, but I think it's funny and I'll tell you the story. Now, this is the thing. People who are close to me and understand me knows that I'm just talking and that's, I just like to have conversations. But I still come across a lot of people who I have to stop them because they immediately want to say, do this, do that, do this. And they immediately are trying to fix a problem that's not even there. Right. And I tell myself, hold up. I'm not asking for your advice. First of all, you don't do what I do. You don't work in my field and I'm not asking for your help. We're just talking because a lot of time I'm the, like what, for example, when, when Scotty and Sam are talking, I'm not sitting here thinking, what, did, what are they saying wrong and how can I correct it? I'm just listening and soaking it in and learning. And most of us, the reason why we, uh, we have a hard time because we do that. We don't sit and soak in and learn. We try to push our little experience onto them. Coming from Jamaica, that's very common. In Jamaica, we're known. 
we this is this running joke you see it on instagram sometimes where it's kind of where it's kind of like uh what did he say again uh it's Jam like on, on the first the first day the, the first day god created jamaica or something like that because we just think we're better than all the other islands like there's jamaica and there, in the caribbean there's jamaica and then there's everybody else and that's how we think well, i think the coolest of all that i mean you guys got some amazing angles great i mean there's a lot of good stuff going on down there so. which is what adds on to that yeah, adds on to that right? to be you're humble jamaica. when you're you know, when right. Drinking, the first trip, the, best. The, yeah. the first trip of my spiritual awakening was in the grill in Jamaica. Like I oh, spent wow. a week there by myself and reading Joe Dispenza. And that's what started this podcast. Like that, oh, by the way, whole trip just changed it. Scotty, do you know who lives down the street from me? Who? Joe Dispenza. Are you yeah. serious? He lives on the Mesa. Yep. I, Whoa. Um, what a guess. Fact, yeah. <laughs> he's a really nice guy. Really. He's so he, he's from Buffalo, New York originally. He's very, very grounded. So I want to just kind of, can I just um, get, uh, if I could share like, what I'm hearing from both of you yeah. and, and what I'm feeling from both of you is the, what, what Scotty is talking about, why people really respect you, Scotty, is the, your sense of groundedness. And you've seen some shit. And I, so I keep going back to the contrast. I'm not saying that we need to suffer in order to, li to, to, to learn. But for mm -hmm. some, can I, I'm going to swear because that's just me. I'm being authentic. fucking A, bro. It's my show. For fucking, for some fucking, <laughs> and for some fu they say that swearing is a sign of intelligence. I don't believe that bullshit, but. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> Is that so the listen, case? I need, so, I need to cuss a whole lot more. Yeah, there is. <laughs> Nerado, Nerado, Nerado. You need to, you need to, yeah, don't hold back, dude. No, I'm, you're doing Nerado. And I'm doing, you know, I'm just, everyone's everybody. Um, the sense of groundedness that we see in you, Scotty, is for the fact that you've seen some shit, but also um, it's just who you are. You're able, in, you're, in both of you, are seeing beyond the noise. Like, like Narada, you just share something that, that a lot of, when I have a client, a lot of clients that are like in a recovery, pick your whatever, alcoholism, sex, drugs, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're in recovery from something or they're, they're in a life, they're in, you know, um, life transition, divorce, death, career shifts, whatever it is, right? Um, we automatically go up in our heads when we are feeling insecure we're feeling overwhelmed we're feeling fearful we're feeling um but we need to protect we go into our shell right we put up our and for a lot of us including myself especially with me with an adhd mind it's going really fast i spent a lot of my life in my head a lot of us walking around in the subway that guy in the subway obviously if he was present and grounded you were present and grounded he wouldn't be peeing on the damn subway. He'd be ground. He would see like I'm in. I'm in a whole bunch of urination, thinking, and, and, and insecurity, and, and inebriation. Whatever is going on in his yeah. head, he would not be present. And that's where the paradox is: is that do we really need? Like we weren't born. We weren't born into this world to to suffer. We were born in perfection. We were born underneath all that thinking is perfection. That quiet space is my, my, one of my favorite coaches and um, thought leaders, Michael Neal, calls that space before thought. It's that alchemical gold where we have this expansiveness feeling, this inner knowing, this inner intelligence we've talked about. It's all the great sages have talked about. Um, and, and so when we're born into this world, we're filled with complete presence, complete calm, complete knowing. Um, and, and what happens is, is then we are bombarded with things. So we then identify with things. We, we see things and we pick up ideas about things and concepts, right? And, and, and then we have this machine between the ears. It's like our MacBook computer that has a tape recorder, a hard drive that's then creating more stories on top of stories. And it's layered stories. And, and so, so like it's a, we're all walking around with tape recorders hitting play, rewind, forward, record all the time, right? And, and we're not even paying attention to the fact that it's all made up. The, mm -hmm. And then our brain is then taking the past and then future fancy thinking about what's mm -hmm. going to happen in the future. It needs to predict stuff. It becomes like Nostradamus, which we know is false. So is suffering optional? Yes, but it's not what we're born into. Um, now, caveman times, like if we were, if we were 
in in you know if this was a hundred thousand years ago and we were i think that was a hundred thousand years if we were if cavemen didn't have this kind of um you know concept driven uh, all this complicated stuff going between our ears it was very simple the stimulus response right you protected mm -hmm. your family you went out and hunt and gathered and you come back you, you were killed or or you're you're either killed or you were be killed right very simple but our brains haven't evolved it's the brain's still in in caveman times so the guy peeing on the platform was on the subway. Um, he was, he's just as, as, as virgin of a, of a, of a human being able to see presence and quiet that we were born into um, as all of us. And I think that's what you saw, like another human being, he's caught up in a whole bunch of shit. It's innocent, psychologically innocent. Yeah. Is it disturbing? Yeah. Could it, could it, could have caused harm? possibly in people and that's the beauty of what what of scotty and Nerado, you see that in human beings too and then you'll call them out on it when they're you have to up in the, you, have you have to, to. you have yeah. to and i think that that's why i, I love talking to you guys because it's like you're not but that's what takes i think that there's a step that you take as a as an adult of being able to if you're not speaking up when you know it's right or you have to then that's even a lot of yourself and and i've promised myself i would always not let an inch go with my word or, or the, the, the inside. And I think understanding that and being able, it takes a lot of groundedness and, and like just, just confidence in yourself to speak up. Cause like the second this guy started putting my friends, like, here we go. Scott, the Superman's going to have to save the day. I'm like, it, it's because I won't let I, by tilting in on that man, I'm giving in, I'm letting the nihilism of the world cave in. And I won't let that happen. Not on my watch. Right. It's not going to happen. And think of the flip side of that. Now, your your response could also be you you compartmentalize it. Be like, you know, this guy's peeing on the on the subway. This guy's a complete asshat. So let me just kick his ass and get out of here, right? Oh, listen, that, that was be an option. I before I got <laughs> up, I said, listen, it's gonna go two ways. If you if you swing, she's getting put down. And it, listen, I don't want to do that, but you have to. That this it's it's like martial arts. Like you don't teach martial arts to have to beat people up. But if I didn't have that skill. I would not have the confidence and he wouldn't have felt like, oh, okay, like there, yep. like I have to stop. And that it's not about being a tough guy. There's no tough guy here. Right. It's just about saying you pass the line and it's not, you have to withdraw. And there was no problem. Right. And I, you, right. I felt, you know, that was, you, know, uh, you saw his humanness, you saw yeah. his humanness. And this is, a, you know, I, and sorry, Narada for interrupting. I'll shut up in a second, but um, I had a colleague who was a, a decorated uh, um, a two, three tour um, veteran in Afghanistan. Um, in, in Iraq, badass motherfucker. Like, um, he was, he, he also did security for one of the presidents. I forgot. Um, he's, he's my age. Um, and he was telling this story about similar, uh, and this is about an example about our humanness. We all get wrapped up in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and why it's, it's, it's like, we need to contrast in this day and age to see like, oh, I'm, I'm in my head. I'm not present. Um, he witnessed road rage. This is up in Topanga Canyon in, in Southern, you know, in LA area, um, where this guy gets out of his car. His wife is in the car. It was so stupid. Some guy cut him off and it was innocent. And the guy took it seriously and they both got out of the car and he's witnessing this as the third party. Mm -hmm. And the guy it was, in, you know, it was in a Porsche Kurt Turbo, whatever, fancy car. The other guy, the guy spits at him like them two, three, two grown adults, like, you're thinking they're so caught up in their and they're so caught up in their thinking. They're so caught up in a story right now about bullshit. And it's nothing ego. to do. That's ego. They're, but it's nothing. Mm -hmm. They're they're in whatever it is. Doesn't they're not present. So the guy, my friend who's who's um, you know, this badass, I think he was I don't know, the, not a not a marine, not a, I don't know what you call it, not a navy SEAL, but one of those guys. He he's a trained killer, but a good but amazing coach, great guy. He sees this happening in real time, just like what you saw with the guy peeing. And instead of like saying, what the fuck are you doing? You dumb ass, you know, you know, right. He, mm -hmm. he, he grabs him and like, you know, what a choke, not choke hold, but in a, he wasn't choking him, but in a way where he kind of, what do you call it, Restrained him. Um, I don't know the words for it, but he's like, Hey, 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 think, think, think what you're going to do. Slow down, slow down. You have your wife in the car. Your loving wife's in the car. Slow down. Mm. Think of where this is going to go if you if you continue to to go on this path of, of violence right now. Slow down. Slow down. You just sat. You had him in a chokehold. I guess I don't know. It wasn't yeah, like a, something like so that. You're, you're like restraining him, yeah. and he slowed down. He slowed down, and then the guy looked at him, and he smiled at him. He like thanked him. 
because he got present and he saw where this, this, his ego was going to take him to a possible path going to jail. Prison, maybe if he heard him, well, you know. Dude, so, that was so the, he, that's the same situation again to me. Yeah. I just, I, I always find myself in these things, but it's, it's the dude, I, I cut off somebody by accident. I was not right in this situation. Yeah. The dude is screaming at me next to me. He pulls up next to me. I'm like, dude, if you want to get out of the car, we can get out of the car. Like, I was like, I, but I'm not being a jerk. I was like, honestly, are you okay? Because his reaction, I was like, this guy really, something's going on. And we get out of the car. And I'm like, I was being very genuine. This is something I would say young Scott would be like, more like, like, are you crazy? Like, I was like, man, are you okay? This, you really, and this dude, he just calmed down. And he was like, dude, I don't know what you got over me. I just got divorced. I was like, bro, I got divorced. I was like, are you good? The dude listens here. Shout yeah. out to Anthony. Now he's listening. It's What's just up, funny, Anthony? Like, like how you switch. Like just by being grounded or being in the moment, like you change a, like you actually fundamentally could change a person by letting, yeah, letting them see it. Like this dude didn't, like if I would have like went full Brooklyn on him, it would have been like a whole ego thing. And instead right. like just coming like, are you okay, man? Like this was a little, that's, that was an overreaction. Right. And you got like a yeah. little bit, and I think people have to just take that approach like with anything, with any approach right. in life. Because we're caught up in our own stories about. We're all have we're all seeing the outside world through a narrated story that's completely fucking made up. Yes, by yes, the exactly. greatest screenwriter, the greatest director. We have Martin Scorsese. I always say we have Martin Scorsese, Vladimir Putin, Chiang Kai Shek, and the Dalai Lama in our head, all speaking to us at once. Now, for right. ADHD person like me, they're screaming at me. <laughs> that's a that's a whole other um, episode. But but Narado, the reason why, and I think uh, what the beautiful thing is, is that you know Scotty's. Um, you know, he's in the finance world, but he's, he's, you're seeing, you, you have the ability to see things holistically. It's all connected with, with the world that you make your living in the world that Narada makes your living, makes his living in, in the world that I make my living in. The beautiful thing is, is that we can all come together and, and share this, the exact same thing, the exact same, exact message. same thing. Right. And that, that when we're grounded and we're present, anything is, anything wonderful is possible. So with that being said, Sam, I interviewed, um, Dr. Uh, David Prologo, uh, for a few months ago, I think, and his book is, uh, the catching point. Right. And, uh, he, in that book, he was talking about why diets fail, why we focus so much on willpower. And one of the things that he says in that book, that's extremely powerful. That's going to tie into what we're saying, right. What we're talking about right yeah. now. As you are becoming healthier and as you are losing weight, as you change your diet, your body will give you signs and signals that is improving. Mm. All you have to do is listen to it. Be talking about being present, right? Listen to it. Meaning throw the damn scale away and focus on, okay, you know what? I have more energy now. You know what? My, I match my mind is actually clearer. Oh, you know what? <clears throat> I feel better. I sleep better. You know, I, I, you know what? I looked in the mirror and I actually look better. I, I'm, I'm proud of myself. My energy, my mental energy uh, is better. You know, I let better people around me. Like, listen to those things that are happening because the compartmentalized thing again is, you know what? I got to eat chicken and broccoli for the next three months so I can fit in my bikini and look good for right. summer. It, they're doing it for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. It's like, exactly. it's like, this is the thing. And, and this is, this is the, I think this is what for all of us is the human kind of conundrum, right? Is right. that we have a, we are a spiritual being and a machine. Right. So Nerado and, and Scotty, your, your conscious self is forever really expansive, right? It's infinity, right? But our consciousness is like, it's like, it's like a genie in a bottle, right? The mm -hmm. bottle is, is the machine. Like we are the plane and the plane needs, in order for the plane to live a long life, you know, most planes in, that are in service are there, you know, 30 years, some of them, some of the jets out there are still being gone since the early nineties because of the maintenance. And we think that, and in, in, in we're living in a society that has it backwards because we've, we've, because of technological advances and because of how fast paced the world we live in and its gratification, we have habituated ourselves to seeing it from the wrong, the wrong way. Right. Right. Where, where, and that's why it, it, once we kind of 
as, as Scotty, when he meditates or when he, you know, he's getting quiet and he's reading um, some of his favorite philosophical authors, which I know of, over the last year, I've known Scotty in the ethers here. Um, when we start slowing down, we start seeing that the noise, the, the 4th of July fireworks in our head, the noise that's so, it's like sugar. Mm -hmm. right it's, in, it's, yep. it's 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 instant gratification but there's no there there with it there's no right. there there with sugar there's no there there with with its heavy salt there's no there there with with simple carbs but once we see that like once we start getting healthy and we start getting into a, a you know a synchronistic kind of a rhythm with our our mind body and spirit what do we, what happens well we start hearing the piccolo being played in the background the piccolo mm -hmm. of presence and it's not sexy and it's not, you know, um, it's not some some rock concert or festival. It's hanging out. I can, I can pay the piccolo with my shirt off and make it sexy. Oh, yes. Anything the radio does yes. with shirt off is sexy. Next time, please. Well, you're going to play the guitar for us. But before, I know it's, I mean, I can, I know it's getting. I got, I got 30% left on, on the, the computer. I'm good okay. for I'm good. I wanted to share this book. I, I, we were talking about books. And you had, you said, you, the doctor, what, what's his name, doctor? Um, David Prologo. Pro 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 this is a book you guys should, would love. I picked up. Um, it was actually recommended to me by a fellow coach. It's um, I'm adding this with my it, fucking grass. It was, written, it was written during the pandemic. It's a um, gentleman who's um, he's a prolific writer. He's New York Times bestselling author. Um, uh, who who's also in recovery from alcohol and drugs. Who um, basically kind of saw like when he had a chance to slow down during the pandemic. You know the pandemic, and he's got a family and everything. Like he's kind of wrote his own kind of instruction manual on how to really get present mm. and, and, and like how, like he been lost in the noise for so long. Duff McDonald, same Duff McDonald. Got yeah. It. I got it in my, in my cart. Now. I, got, I got, I got beef oh, fed, I got beef fed liver pills and a book in my cart. I'm really, I'm really What go. do you think of that Narada? I, I wanted to ask him because he's the, he's the um, whisper. You're the supplement whisper. What do you think of, what did I do with it? Oh, I threw it back there. Um, the beef, those capsules, because uh, for vegetarian, I mean, I'm kind of cheating, but right. Well, I mean, I think uh, getting organ meats in your diet is is uh, extremely beneficial for many reasons. Uh, for someone who is vegan or vegetarian, of course, you're not going to eat beef, li beef liver, right? But if you're comfortable um, getting in a supplement form, I can definitely see the benefits of doing that as well. Yeah, I think it's like one of those superfoods. It's super dense, good, good, uh, low in no sugar, no fiber, uh, low in carbs. It's just, it's just one of those amazing things. I, I'm, I can't wait to, to take. It. I just, I tried it once, Narado, and it was just a little, it's a little chewy for, for my. I was talking to someone the other day, and I told chewy. them. So I have two place, two. I get two food services delivered to me. Uh, one is Butcher Box, and one is U.S. Wellness. U.S. Wellness, they do uh, organ meat, so I get beef heart, kidney, mm. livers, duck Yummy. gizzards. Uh, brains, wait, wait, what was it? Wait, is it what duck gizzards? Duck gizzards, duck gizzards oh. yeah. And yeah, I know. And if people look at me, my friend said to me, yeah. You know, you sound crazy right now, right? And I, so I, was, like, <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, maybe I do, but you know what? Go I actually love ducks, right? Exactly. I'm like, uh, I'm like one of those. You never seen a lion kill some kill something in the um, in the watch, uh, in the wild. They don't cut off the legs and the breasts and stuff and eat it, right? They don't have a knife and fork. They go straight for the organs. Like animals know that's where most of the nutrients are, right? But we eat the <laughs> outer part. We wonder why we don't have it now. That's, that's not common in our society, of course. But it's a lot of Eastern societies it is. But I just wanted to share that story because I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, like, I wouldn't have ever asked me, like, if I was going to be eating, you know, taking the, uh, that, that supplement. I'd say you're crazy. But... Um, you know, I, as I get older and I'm a little bit older than both of you, um, it's a little bit I just cool. wanted to see if my, we can make my nose smaller, but we'll see what happens. But, um, I, I, as I get older, I notice, you know, things are changing a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. and I, and especially with my mind, it, it's still so fast. Um, because they, they, you know, people's, I've heard two different stories about like ADHD. It's like, it can get worse as you get older or it can, it, it can stabilize out. So like, mm -hmm. like kids that have ADHD or, or say, or they're even on the spectrum, right? Cause it's, it's a Venn diagram, people with ADHD and, and Asperger's, there's a lot of commonalities, mm -hmm. um, that I, do I need to, to, to take supplements that'll keep me more grounded. And that's why I'm taking it. Cause it's supposed to help with, with focus. Um, 
but it, listen, if it works, um, are we with time, Scotty? How are we doing with time? I ain't got shit. I'm going. To, I'm going to the beach with a ten in a half hour. So that's, nice. That's what, well, I, uh, I, um, I, I think that that this is an this is definitely an ongoing conversation because like this is so needed, especially now. I think the distractions are, distractions are getting even louder. Would you yeah. agree? Like, especially but, with like, was it Meta introducing that new like like virtual reality bullshit? I don't know if you all seen it. Like what Zuckerberg yeah, wants to do. Yeah, that's it's about scary. to go off. That's, no, that's if, really if you scary. Guys, if it's you going just, to go off, or what do you do? You think it's going to? If you just look at everything that's happening, right? There's a little bit more anxiety. Things are starting to fall apart. Now you just mix in. I, I look at it like how many repetitions did we get being of being men or being adults and, and just speaking to people and getting connected. I would say a lot more than a kid who's 20 or 15. And that's what worries me is the interaction with humans. Because I think the more you get on the phone, the more you get in the metaverse, the more you get in all this stuff you're losing the piece that makes us human. Because like you said before, which I love, again, the contrast, Sammy, there's the primitive side of us, which I would say is the instinct, which is sex, drugs, rock and roll. Then there's that divine piece. I think we are moving more towards being primitive in a way through social media. Like I see the one thing I hate is when people use the word love. Like love is such, I believe love is the answer mm. to everything and the Beatles. And when, oh, I love you, bro. You don't like, I, I just, I'm very careful with the way I use my language. And, and when I say, I love you, I love you. Like, I, I think you just start losing the importance. But you can feel it. Next, yeah. You can, and you, you feel say it as well. It, there's an yeah. essence to it. And that's the thing is that I think we're, because of what's going on in the world, we're, we're, we're getting, we're getting distracted even more. And we're, we're, we're forgetting that we have this built in sensory system that's so powerful that that we don't need to do anything about to 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 harness but because we're getting distracted we're not paying attention to that sensory system where when someone says i love you right or i care about you like the more that we are habituated to the you know the, the world of the lights and the and the external validation and and social media and we're not paying attention to present moment we're not paying attention to our own um sensory gifts of of knowing of of uh, presence of of intelligence of wisdom which is not concept driven which is not figuring out a pro a, a problem on an equation or a puzzle um which is the answers to all the big questions like what do i do next in my career or should i marry this girl or should i you know blah blah all the important stuff the real not the real important stuff um the the that we're 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 going to find, we're going to end at kind of end at a tipping point. We're going to probably, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see, especially like with the war going on in Ukraine and what's going on in China with all these, I don't know if you've read about what's the, um, these, you know, brave new world things are doing with, yeah. with uh, uh, censorship and um, them monitoring every move you make in the world and during your day. Um, and, and also with, you know, the, the environment, what's going on with, with our energy crisis. I think that the people that stay grounded within themselves, know themselves more and, and, and pay less attention to outside and, and discipline themselves with social media, with news, with outside stuff. Yep. They're the ones that are going to make the real important changes. Absolutely. Right. Dude, ab absolutely. And they're the, they're the Nerados and the Scotties. And, wow. and, 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 and no, I'm serious. I mean, I mean like that's, it, it does, you don't need to have a huge platform in order for no and i i think this whole thing each of us are like dropping you just drop a little pebble in, in the pond and yeah. all of us will rise together and like i get this question all the time and from kids in the gym like i talked to a lot of young dudes in emails it's like yeah but scott i can't just sit and meditate and stay in the party how do i do both and this is a question it's funny because i'm not a i'm not a, a catholic anymore i would say i'm just like everything i just love religion in general and, and the yeah, for, for what it, for what you pull from it but john in the new testament asks jesus this question he goes I, I get it. I get what you're saying, but like, I got to feed my family. How do I do this? And Jesus says to John, he says, be in the world, but not of it. And that's the mm -hmm. way I try to live my life is that we are, if you want to say, say the matrix, we're living in the matrix and I'm in, I'm playing this game. There's money, there's power. There's, I play this. It's fun. Ha ha. I do it because I don't do it because I need to prove Cosmic it. Cosmic game, baby. It's the game. And when you start looking at it that way, like I'm in the, because when I meet people like, well, you just don't seem like you fit. I'm like, I don't fit because I'm not, I'm here, but I'm not, I'm not of your world. Like I don't, I'm in playing the game, 
but I, it doesn't really matter the outcome because in reality, the outcome doesn't matter. Cause why? Right. Cause we are, we're all like other animals that we will die. But at the same point, there's one difference. We know we will die. And just mm-hmm. knowing that for me, gives me peace. It's like, who fucking like, is I get myself so straight. Sam, you heard me. I was so stressed up about work and this and that and money. It's like, yo, who gives like in reality, if I'm enjoying the moment like this right here, like I feel like I've been floating for the last 40 minutes just listening to you guys. Like literally, this is what it's about. It's about connection with, with guys who are real authentic guys or girls, whatever, and just being able to like to be your authentic self. And right. the fact we get to spread this out and people get to hear it. It's fucking uh, yeah. It's, it's brilliant. And this is why it's it is, this arrow by so quickly. I'm sure Narado will agree too. Like this is the thing, like why they're going to, why they're people like us and we're not, I'm look, I'm just, I'm no fan. I'm, you know, I'm just a schmuck like anybody. I'm no, no, nothing fancy. Um, where there, where there, there are a lot of people out there. Like, uh, hopefully, there are more people. There, of course, there are. There are people out there that are awake, that they're human, like all of us. They have their frailties, like we all do. Like that's what I'm saying. It's like I'm going to quote Sid Banks, who was this kind of Scottish philosopher um, that kind of had this enlightenment experience. He said that if only we were not afraid of our experience, our cycle, like our experience of fucking up, our experience of being human and sex, drugs, and rock and roll, the whole experience. If only we were not afraid of being afraid, not afraid of being fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. That alone would change the world, which means that we are so afraid of being, we, we're so afraid of being human, like really human. We are so afraid of being uh, frail. We're so afraid of our humanness that this is what's, what's causing us to, seek external validation to kind of mask that humanness or, or dilute that humanness or distract us from our own sense of being human. Yes. And that's where um, people like us, and again, I'm not putting us on a, on a, on a bully pulpit or anything. Why the, you know, the, what's his name? The, the, um, the you know, whoever you like, that's, the, that's speaking this kind of uh, understanding. The Sid Banks this. works, Sammy. Sydney Sid Banks, Banks Sydney Banks, and that's the, uh, or Scott Gazzoli. Enlighten, Enlighten Gardner, right? Oh, he, God, he wrote Scott, that. Right. And uh, you, wanna... need to, you need to look, Narado, do me a favor when you have time. It's a great book. Oh, Beautiful. I believe uh, he tickled, said. Yeah, I want to look into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, something... tickled, but the Enlighten Gardner and, um, oh my God, The Missing Link. Look ah, up The Missing gotcha. Link. It's a simple book. Don't, don't read it, read it, read it with an open mind. Read it right. without judgment because you'll be like, what is this guy talking about? Yeah. Like, <laughs> the first time I'm like, this guy's smoking something. Sid, right. Sid Banks had a quote. Um, he said, in every area of life, uh, everyone is capable of seeing from a higher perspective than oh, they I do now. That. He said, you're, you're never stuck. You're simply limited by the level you are seeing from. And that shit always hits me because that's what we're talking about, about the shaman. And, yeah. the, like from, I th- and I think getting there, like all the stuff we're talking about, mine's meditation, Sammy's is being really in the present, more mechanical way, I'd say Sammy described it. Whichever way you get there, it doesn't matter as yeah. long as you get there. So yeah, maybe it takes like for me, I've I've been drawn more towards Tibetan Buddhism and all this stuff. Maybe the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's all the same di- shit. Different. It's, it's, same just, shit. it's a different translation, different exactly. uh, of this exact same. And that's the thing where religion got lost in politics. You know, it's like every religion, whether you're Jewish, Christian, Buddhist, Muslim, Taoist, Zoroastrian, Zara- whatever they call it. Um, it's all saying the same thing that, that right. we're, we are, we all created with well-being and love within us. We're all equal. Um, and that's why Jesus hung out with, you know, if you, if you look at the stories in the Bible, Jesus hung out with prostitutes, derelicts and, mm-hmm. and, cr- and criminals. Um, Cause he saw the divinity within, within the human being within them. And when we can see divinity within all of us, we'll then start eating better. And so and, then, and, and hiring Narado for, you know, and having, um, and, and, and also in, in investing wisely with Scotty. And, and I have a s- serious question though, that, um, and not for you two, but for anyone that listened out there in the podcast world, do you love yourself? And I'll ask that question, like seriously, think about the question because Scott brought it up. Like, you know, the word love, what does it really mean? Do you love yourself? And really think about even if you have to look up in the dictionary what the word love actually means right um and really think about that and the reason why i say that is this if you truly love yourself wouldn't you want to do the best things for yourself 
nutrition wise, habit wise, environment wise, wouldn't you want to be the best version of anything? Like, for example, if you love your children, you want them to be better than you. You want to be a better version of you. You want to, them to always improve. You know, you work hard for them. But then at the same time, do you love yourself? So when people talk about self-care, I don't even believe in self-care. I believe in self-love, meaning that when I love myself, I take care of myself physically, emotionally, and mentally. Self-care, just looking at one piece of the ass, one piece of the puzzle, but self-love, do you have, and if you don't have that self-love, then you want to start on working on getting that self or find out why you don't have that self-love and working towards it. Absolutely. Dude. That's beautiful. Well, thank you. for. And, 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 and I think true. people, and, people need to understand that like when, when you do self-love and self-care, people would say, well, that's a little vain and selfish. It's not because how you treat yourself is how you will treat the world. Your thoughts are your reality. Mm. So by having that, that lighter talk to yourself, by not being so hard on yourself, you will be better on everybody else. And that's the reason why I do it. It's not even for me. It's, it's just how my world looks for everybody else. And I'm just a better person. Like my boss now is like, meditate for you. Come in, please. Like you're a fucking different person. It's it, it, you're, you're, you are a better imprint of who you truly are, your essence when you do those things. And I, and I want to point out, and I thank you, and Scotty, that's brilliant because I, but the one thing I, do, I don't, I don't agree with is, is, and I'm going to throw it out there is that it, you don't have to find self-love. You don't have to work on it. It's right. all there on offer. It's always been there. It's just like presence. You're just not paying attention because again, the noise is addicting. You know what I mean by noise, you know, mm -hmm. the outside world, the noise, the noise in our head, the insecurities and the, you know, the beliefs and all that stuff we've been raised with. And also it's to, to the self, to love thyself is also to be okay with every dimension of, of our, us as, us, as living in our psychology, because we're not living in the outside world. We're living in our psych in our thinking, we're living in our, the world of our, our narrator, but also knowing that the narrator is, there's so much beyond the narrator and self-love is seeing like, I can still fuck up. I can still be anxious. I can still make mistakes and be okay anyways. Because we're always okay. And we're always one thought away from well-being. We're just, we just got to pay attention to, to the piccolo. <laughs> we I have a question for you. I have a question yeah. for you, Sammy, with saying that, because that's interesting. So I agree with you hundred percent there. I think that self-love doesn't mean that you're perfect because none of us are right. Self-love means that, you know, acceptance, acceptance. Exactly. You realize you said, you talk about the contrast earlier, the contrast of you fucked up, you had a bad day, how, you know, those things are going to happen. That's just part of life. That's just who we are. That's just what happens. Mm -hmm. My question to you for someone who let's say is kind of lost in that matrix then, right. And talk about not really showing themselves love as they should. If you say they shouldn't necessarily work on it, but how can someone get back to that part where they're like, you know what, I do love myself and I need to focus on it and enhance that power. Wonderful question. I, I, that's, that's like the, I think that's the, the question of the ages, I think is, is slowing down and starting to get, put the white lab coat on, right? The proverbial white lab coat and getting really curious about the world you live in getting really curious about how, about thought and thinking, getting really curious about how um, you see your minute by minute experience mm. and seeing like, there's so much more than thought and thinking that our, our beliefs and our judgments and our criticisms and, and, and how people think about us, how we think about ourselves and the stories we're telling ourselves about ourselves. And I can keep going on and on that there's something beyond that. Something mm. that um, all the great sages have pointed to that, that Scotty's shared, um, with, that that we've been pointing that that's always been there. It's always been an offer. You don't need to work for it. You don't need to do anything for it. It's it's that we are built to be resilient. We are built to have hope. It's 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 our essential nature. Mm. It's our essential nature to be kind. It's our essential nature to be good. What happens is is that we have a brain that gets involved. Right. And sometimes 
and, and that essential nature can sometimes be for better or for worse get contaminated by thought the contrast the contrast but we again. need the contrast and that's the gift we have this technology that we've been innocently misusing for forever right and you can see right now like we weren't put on this earth to kill each other we weren't put on this earth to 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 rob each other we were put on this earth to, to learn and to love each other and and so this this the contrast that we're seeing right now um is so extreme mm -hmm. for for most of including myself to see what's going on in the world that has been going on in the world that that it's got to just wake you up and and that's why there's so many people that are waking up and that's where so many people are hiring someone like Unirado or 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 getting straight with their money with Scotty and, and, and making right decisions and starting to see, oh, wait a second. You know, I have limited time on this planet. I am an expansive being. And I believe, Sam believes that, that, you know, when you die, you just go on, you go home, you go home to, you know, to source, what do you call, whatever you want to call it. And if you believe in reincarnation, you go into something else, you know, reincarnate, but, but we are this energy. And, and, and we have the get, we were born into life. Like it's so, when we see that life's a blessing, like every day waking up, every day above ground is a blessing. Once we get sort of getting gracious about life, then anything is possible despite the challenges we have, despite exactly. the contrast. And, and once we start, you know, getting grateful, like, do you know what the odds are that you came into this world? Like, think about that. When your parents got together and made you, you showed up. It's like, what, one in, what was it? One in a billion? Like, that's a pretty amazing. Like, you start getting really um, curious and fascinated by, like, how amazing it is just yeah. to be here right now. You, you, you got to keep that perspective very close to you, to the soul, especially all Love of us it. that, you know, we have, we have, a, we have just the, we are in the 1%, all of us. And so. why do you think people with near death experiences, like um, you, you all should check out Anita Morjani, who's um, I've seen her speak a couple of times in, in LA. Um, and she's, she, she had an NDE near death experience and she was raised in a very strict Hindu. She grew up in India, um, you know, very kind of, um, um, patriarchal kind of society where she's arranged marriages and, you know, women don't have a lot of say back, you know, now it's changed a little bit. And she had, she, because of all these stressors and how she needed to, she was basically um, showing up in the world, looking for external validation all the time, track the partner, you know, you need to put on your best set, be your best self. You don't want to make any mistakes. You need to listen to men. Men have the answers, you know, um, she got cancer and she almost, you know, she died basically. We don't need to have a near death experience in order to see the divinity within us to see yes. like that. We're that like, we already have it, but you're going to stumble. Like you can't beat it. You can't beat the system of thought thinking. You're going to forget sometimes and have bad days and have crazy thinking and maybe you fuck up once in a while, you know, like, but, but what, when we see like, I'm okay with that too, but I'm also okay with being like this conscious, loving, caring, resilient person. Both sides. Yeah. Both sides. Yeah. And we and need that. Sorry. It, it's just this game that, that we're constantly balancing. And I would say to take it to the, philo to the philosophical side of it, it's like, I feel each of us feel like we have a debt that's owed. There's some sort of guilt um, right. in us that whether it's growing up Catholic that you feel like uh, I'm, I'm with original sin, or if you're the woman in the middle East that you kind of owe it to the men, then now white men in America feel whatever that is, you don't owe anybody anything except to truly live your life authentically, virtuously with integrity or, and, and just be able to have the imprint. Like all I want in my life is when people bring up my name, oh, that kid was a good kid. I really got a good feeling. That's all I want. I don't care about anything else. As long as there's a positive emotion related to, to my name, when somebody cares, that in such a demoralizing time, in such a, a world that's so fucked up, that if, if we can just make that little change, and if ever, imagine you had that feeling about everybody, all of a sudden your world's a different way. All of yes. a sudden it's different. That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah, and you, and, and it's interesting because I, I say I hear people say it, and I have people on the podcast they say, you know, how are you making a difference? You're just, you know, you're just some guy talking, sharing this truth, sharing this understanding. Where Narado, you know, you're sharing health and wellness stuff, and. Like, well, no, that's how it works. Like you see one person can, you know, again, just placing that seed, planting that seed.
it, it doesn't, you know, what if one person hears this podcast, one person, and and uh, and they change a little bit, it's going to change. It's going to help change the world. But you know, at the same time, um, I I'm hoping that the con- people see the contrast as an invitation to 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 for them to point back to what we've been sharing for the last hour or so because. Um, we're on an hour and a half, Sammy. Oh, hour and flew, a half. flew by. Wow, we, flew, wow, wow. we flew. We flew. We flew by. Okay, it's been an amazing hour and a half. Yeah. Dude, this okay. was good, guys. Seriously. I think we should end it with Narada. Can you play something real quick? Yeah, you want to play? I got ten, I got seven percent left. Narada, you want to play something? All right, I won't go a whole song, and I'm not even gonna sing. I'm just gonna play a little bit of a melody. Scotty's gonna quick. sing. I'll sing whatever you want. All right. So All we got. Right oh, ahead. he's like, I'm totally not prepared. Oh, <laughs> it's like I've been tuning my guitar since yesterday, but I think this is about. Hey, I have my baby with me all the time, all the time. <laughs> you know, I don't normally do this, but let me break you off a little bit. Of the and he's a guitarist. <laughs> what can't you do, Narada? Uh, that, that's that's the million dollar question. Right, he should be wearing <laughs> he should be wearing the cape, dude. Seriously, we we'll get one with a Z on it or something like that. I like that. Zico. Ooh, that. nice. That. Uh, let me tell tell me if you can hear it, uh, because I'm I have to finger style this one. I don't know what that means, but I'll, but I'll. What's finger sound mean? I play with my fingers, basically. Not ah, cool. All right, let's see if uh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me get my uh, headphones out of the way here. Ladies and gentlemen, a genius at work. Can you hear that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great song too. All right, I'm gonna play sing a little bit. If it doesn't work, we can just edit it out. Oh, please podcast. just sing. I don't give a shit, man. This sounds I like that that vibe. Keep going. All right, this part. Old pirates, yes, they rabbi. So light to the merchant ships. Minutes after they took I from the bottomless pit, but my end was made strong by the end of the Almighty. We forward in this generation triumphantly. Won't you help me sing? These songs of freedom, it's all I ever had. Redemption songs. Oh, let me move my my car. My, That's one of go. my favorite songs, by the way. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Have no fear for atomic energy, cause none of them can stop the time. How long shall they kill our prophets while we stand aside and look? Some say it's just a part of it, we got to fulfill the book. Won't you help me sing? Oh, another song of freedom, yes, child. It's all I ever had. Didn't you know? Redemption songs. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Oh, yeah, have no fear for atomic energy. Cause none of them can stop at the time. How long shall they kill our prophets? While we stand aside and look. Yes, some say it's just a part of it. We got to fulfill the book. 
won't you help me sing another song of freedom yes it's all i ever had redemption song my legs are trembling so much i was wow so nervous. dude that was amazing i got i got goosebumps <laughs> That's what a great, oh my god, man! Redemption song, Bob. Dude, what a fucking perfect way to end it. That was a perfect song yes, for this conversation. I, I have goosebumps. I can't. I don't know yeah, I'll that was good. I thought that hit. That hit. I think this whole thing just kind of hit. Honestly, feeling flowing. My, it feels different playing by myself. My legs were shaking so much just a while oh ago. God. I messed up <laughs> on a couple of. The, I went somewhere of, when you were singing that. Too. <laughs> no, I went. Somewhere. I was. We know we were. I was. I was. My eyes were closed. Just in the. In that. In that. I was in the present moment. If, if so, we were, say, say, this whole conversation was is, is, is was the present moment. Yeah, that's why I went so quickly. Thank you for that, Narado. Mm -hmm. Thank you, man. Um, thank you, wow, Sammy. Dude. Thank you, everybody. Yo, this was awesome. Um, check out their podcast in the notes below or on YouTube. Review, subscribe, all that nonsense. Um, that's it, man. As always, we're out. What a, what a gift this was, brother. Dude, thank, thank you. you guys. Seriously, Love you both. Um, thank you so I much. I got a, I got an yeah. idea for something like this, but we'll talk offline about it. Um, okay. later, people. Stay safe. Stay positive. Stay blessed. Peace. Thank you.